logic, reason, dialectic, ethics, all these concepts that we've come up with, uh, are best seen, in my opinion, as tools. Uh, the best defense I've seen of them is, okay, our logic and reason has enabled us to launch moon missions, to uh, cure horrible diseases, uh, to heat frozen parts of the earth, like the part that I inhabit, or at least it's frozen four months of the year. It's enabled us to do all kinds of wonderful things. I agree. Our ethical system has at least give, put the idea into our heads that it's wrong to gratuitously harm other things. That's great. I, I agree with that. Um, but we've got to remember what these things are. Logic and ethics and uh, all this kind of thing, um, science even, are tools. They're tools that we have created to serve our purposes. Um, and we can't assume that they are absolutes, because there are creations, there are tools. Um, we have purposes for them. We've created science in order to improve our lives. We've created ethics for that very reason. <clears throat> this doesn't mean that any of these things are real. A lot of people seem to think that logic, science, and all this kind of thing is real. And, I don't know, I guess that <laughs> in my own weird way, I, uh, I have my own explanation for that. I think it's, you know, the conventional Prussian modeled educational system that we were all put through. We were just told that these things are absolutes and that's the end of it. Well, they're not. <laughs> Um, they're just tools that we have invented. And a lot of people say, well, look, if mathematics is just a figment of my imagination, why is it that we've been able to do so much with mathematics? I said, well, that's when we put mathematics to a specific use. It is useful to us when we use it as a tool, when we are in control of it, when we have set parameters for it that we maintain we can go a long way with it. Um, now, when the tool becomes an immutable fact, or, as I say, it becomes a god or an idol or whatever you want to call it, the relationship has changed. It's no longer something that we have created to serve us. When we say that logic and our ethical system have certain goals in mind, um, and that these goals are sort of absolutes, we have become the servant of our tools. Um, I don't think that we actually um, live our lives with this in mind, but just because we don't live our lives with this in mind, i.e. that logic and science are our servants, um, <clears throat> or our tools, it doesn't mean that we're not simply a victim of our own familiarity with these things and treating them as absolutes. So, um, we have gotten to the point where we realize that a lot of the axioms that are underpinning everything, a lot of the premises, maxims, whatever you want to say, have flaws in them. Our ethical system has certain flaws in it. Our scientific system has certain flaws in it. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you take all of that and throw it all down the sink. What it means is you don't bow down before a flawed idol. It means that you see science and ethics and logic and reason and all this stuff for what they are. They're tools. Uh, it's a flawed tool, yes, but it'll work fairly well if you put it to the correct uses. If you take your tools as solid facts, you run into all kinds of trouble. If you take logic as an immutable thing, as I say, when you idolize it, when you turn it into an idol, some unforeseen consequences result. <laughs> uh, you run into 
certain nihilistic conclusions. But not if you understand them. You understand your tools for what they are, that they are tools. That, okay, let's say that I assume that uh, time and space are not infinite, and that's one of the things upon which our science is more or less predicated. I assume that they're not infinite, and then I discover that they are infinite, or that they might not even make sense as concepts at all. Does that mean that my science doesn't work? No, it doesn't mean that that electric lamp over there that I put on my face doesn't work. Of course it works. It works what I in the way that I expect it to work. I haven't established any fundamental realities here, however. All I've done is I've taken certain things for granted and ran with them, and the result was what I wanted. That's the proper relationship between us and our tools. When I start saying that because I don't understand what time and space are, and I don't really understand what the fundamental nature of electricity is, that that lamp doesn't work, or that lamp can't work, or whatever, <laughs> uh, that's when your tools have become gods. Um, we've got to understand what concepts are. Concepts exist here. They're our own creations. They're our own tools that we put to certain tasks. Um, we can't allow them to become our masters. Otherwise, we fall for, or we become victims of, the flaws inherent in our own tool set. I like the quote from um, the original Star Trek series where Spock says, Computers make excellent servants, master. Uh, servants, captain, master. Computers make, make excellent servants, captain. I have no desire to serve under them. Logic, reason, dialectic, ethics, all these sorts of things do make excellent servants. We've created them, though. They're just things we've created to serve us. I don't really feel like serving under them, especially when we understand that all of them, or almost all of them, are fundamentally flawed.